Slash here means per. $1.50 per cup of coffee. You would consider this to be a rate of change. All right. Other common rates of change you might have seen before would be like kilometers per hour. Right? That would be a rate of change. Because how many kilometers do you drive per, i.e. for one hour, for, for one unit? How much coffee do you spend for one cup of coffee, per coffee? Okay? So let's take a look at this problem. He says, create an equation to determine the cups of coffee. Well, let's look at the table first. Okay, I buy no coffees. It's going to cost me nothing. I buy one coffee. I'm paying $1.50. Two coffees, three fifty, And you can see here, every time you add a cup of coffee... It's a pretty simple equation. You're just going to add $1.50. Right? I buy eight cups of coffee, you're at 12 bucks, 13.50, and lastly, $15 for 10 cups of coffee. The rate of change here is the difference between the bottom and the top of each one of these. All right, let's take the difference between the bottom and the top. The difference between the bottom and the top. Difference between the bottom and the top. So as you go through this here, you're looking for rate of change. You're really just looking to calculate the difference between the bottom and the top. And you'll notice for every single one of these calculations here that we do, every single one, I'm getting $1.50. Which, as we talked about before, that is your rate of change. Was the $1.50. Okay? So what equation would represent this? Well, they said, let C be the cost. There's no fixed cost associated with this. Previously, we talked about word problems where you'd have a banquet and it's $1,000 or $500 just to book the banquet, and then there's a cost per person, per plate. You don't have that here. Um, you're just monitoring the cost for, for coffee. So if there's no coffee sold, you, make, you sell no money, make no money, uh, it's $0. So the equation here would be cost is directly related to the number of coffees you sell. So therefore, the cost that you're going to incur is $1.50 times N, where as they said in the question, N is the number of coffees that you're working with. Okay, so that's your equation. Uh, it says, draw a graph comparing the total cost and number of coffees. Okay, so if we're going to draw a graph on this here, I'm going to make my axis look like this. And I'm going to explain why in a second. On the bottom here, we're going to have number of coffees and that's going to be measured with the variable n and c is going to be your cost that you're incurring here okay notice here i chose to use my um, quadrant all positive here right this is going to be zero coffees and then maybe we'll do one coffee two coffees three four five six seven eight nine ten coffees Okay, likewise here, um, let's go up. We're going to go, let's go on this grid here. Notice here I have 10 sort of units I want to count to here. So how many boxes do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We could probably uh, do every other and get a decent, you don't have to graph every single point, but I'm going to skip a box going up because there's, more boxes going up here. Right, and it can continue on, but we don't need that to be the case here. So I want to plot these points. Well, okay. Zero coffee, zero dollars. One coffee, a dollar fifty. Two coffees, three dollars. Three coffees, four fifty. Four coffees, six. Seven coffee, or sorry, uh, five coffees, seven fifty. Six coffees, nine dollars. Seven coffees, ten fifty. And lastly, your eighth cup of coffee um, is going to be twelve dollars. Okay. Now, if I continue this on here, this linear equation will continue on. Uh, let me just get the variable c and the variable n here. And this would be a, a rough sketch of your linear relation here. Okay, so we did one and two. Uh, the, the graphs form a line. Why does this, why does, uh, why does the graph have this shape? 
This is a linear relation. Obviously, visually, you can see it's a linear relation. It's a straight line, and linear relations are straight lines. But the question is, is why does it come out to be a straight line? The reason this comes out to be a straight line is because whether I'm going from my first coffee to my second or my eighth coffee to my ninth, the increase is the same. It's $1.50 every time. So therefore, visually, what's going on here, if we take a look at the graph, every time I take a step over by one unit, I go up the exact same amount, right? You go up the exact same, or you go up $1.50 each time. So if I take a step over, I'm going to go up the exact same height. So what happens is these heights are the same here. Notice I put the same markers and these heights are the same. So every time you take a step over one unit, you're going to go up by the exact same amount, right? Now, had I taken this in this example here, if I didn't have that property, if I didn't have this idea of every one unit over, you go up by the same amount, then you wouldn't have a linear equation. Like, let's suppose I take a step over, but then I go up here on the, on the next one. And then the next one, maybe I go up even higher on the next one. Once you do that, now you have an equation that, right, is no longer, oops, sorry, guys. Now you have an equation that is no longer linear, right? It's more, it has a curve to it which is not the case here. So whenever you take a step over by one unit and you're going up by the same amount every single time, that's always going to create a linear relation. So here you can say because um, there's a constant increase, right? Uh, now they say choose any two points and calculate the rise over run, calculate the slope of the line. So. You've already studied slopes already. If you guys remember, you choose any two points at all. Um, you can choose these two points or any two points at all. And you want to calculate the rise over the run. Well, the rise here, right, rise is your vertical, is going to be, go all the way over here, 9 minus, go all the way over here, 750. So the rise here is $1.50, and the run here is, a, is one unit. So therefore, the slope is going to be the rise over the run, which in this case is going to be $1.50 over 1, which is $1.50. Okay? Now, I wanted to make this point here. Um, that you, did, you do not have to take um, the points that are directly next to each other. I will still get the same calculation if you choose points that are far apart. So for instance, let's say I take this point here and let's get a different color on this. Let's say I take this point here in purple and I grab this point here. When I connect this up here and create my triangle, I should still get uh, the exact same $1.50 as my answer. Well, what's my run here? The run of this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, the run is 4. And the rise here, if we look and calculate the rise, it's going to be what? Well, here I'm at um, 9, and here I'm all the way at 3. So 9 minus 3 equals 6. If I do this calculation and calculate the slope, you're going to have rise over run is going to be six over four, which again is $1.50. So you get the same answer. You do not have to just choose the two points that are right next to each other. You can choose points that are further apart. Okay, so please copy this all out uh, in your worksheet here if you need it. Uh, and I'm gonna have you submit the entire worksheet. All right, so follow along the video as we go through these. Okay, these ones here you're gonna do on your own. Um, if you look at these at these questions here, I'll do a couple of them for you here. Let's do some of these for you. Do you want to calculate the slope? So your slope is your rise over your run. So when you calculate your slope here, you want to pick two points, any two points at all, but you want to pick ones that are at nice corners so you know the values of them. So here you've got two nice points drawn for you. And if I want to calculate my rise, please take a look at the units. If I go over here, this is at between four and six, this must be a five. And then if I go over here, this must be, this is at a two. 
So you get the rise is three. The run here, you gotta take a look at what each box represents. This is one, two, three, four, five. So every box is worth one. So this is one, two, three, four. So my slope here is going to be your rise, which is three over your run, which is four. Okay, now take a look at B. Same deal, you've got two nice points here to use. Draw yourself your triangle. It always goes, your triangle always goes below and you wanna calculate your rise and your run. Okay, well, what's my rise here? My rise here is going to be how many boxes I've got? One, two, three boxes. Okay, three boxes. My run here is going to be how many boxes? One, two, three, four, five, six boxes. Six boxes. So now be careful here. Your slope here, it is your rise over your run, so you can, it is three over six, which you can reduce to be a half. However, you have to look at the direction of the line. Whenever you read a line, you read it from left-hand side to the right-hand side. So as I read this from left to right, my slope is increasing. And because the slope is increasing, this is positive slope. For this question here, my slope, as I read it from left to right, is decreasing. So just like you read a book left to right, that's how you read graphs. As I read this from left to right, my slope is decreasing. Because, it's de because it is decreasing, tack on a minus sign on that slope. So the slope, the actual value of the slope is minus a half. Likewise, this answer should be a negative slope and this answer should be a positive slope. Okay, so I'll let you guys do um, C and D on your own. Determine the rise of run of the given points. Okay, I'll do a couple more of these here for you. So let's do, I'll grab, uh, let's do this one here. Okay, draw yourself your little triangle and please do this along with me. And you're gonna go ahead and calculate your rise and your run. So my rise here, again, you're going to be counting the number of boxes. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. And my run here is just one. So the slope for this question The slope for this question here is equal to rise over, over run, which is five over one, or just five. Okay, in fact, we can label it over here. Um, you'll notice the points here are M and N. So what you can write down is you can say the slope of M n is 5 over 1 is 5. All right, let's go ahead and calculate the slope of dc. Slope of dc, okay, grab this point, grab this point, draw yourself your triangle. And my rise here is going to be how many units? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. My run here is going to be how many units? One, two, three, four units. Okay, so my, the slope of this line is six over four, which you can reduce, divide the top and bottom by two to three over two. Now again, take a look at the direction of the line. Notice this line here that I just did was increasing, so we kept it, the slope positive. This line here is also increasing, so I'm gonna keep the slope positive. Okay, this answer here, Whatever you get should be negative value. Okay, let's take a look here at this line here. Might be a little hard to see here. Let me make it a little, a little more clear. Um, they have you calculate the, oops. They have you calculate the slope of this line, but there's something wrong here. If I go to calculate the slope of the line, the rise on this is easy to calculate. One rise is vertical, so one, two, three, four, five boxes. Okay, done. However, the run is zero, right? There is no left or right to this line. So if I go to calculate the slope of this line, M for slope, and we're going from point G to point H, so it'd be slope of GH, 
is going to be the rise is 6, the run is 0. You can't divide by 0. So this becomes undefined. This is an undefined line. Okay, it has no slope. The reason it has no slope is that you can't... Slope is a measure of steepness. This has infinite steepness. You could not construct a line that is any steeper than this line. So there is no measure of steepness because it is the ultimate steepness. It's a perfectly vertical line. Okay. Likewise, if you answer this question here, you guys will find the slope of this is zero. And I'd like you guys to do the math and see why that is the case.